I am making a Galaxy Eyes deck profile. I managed to get all the new cards and I realized it's been a while since I last made a Galaxy Eyes deck profile, so I figured why not make a new one. Galaxy Eyes is probably one of my favorite archetypes to come out of Zexal right next to Sharks, the Barian Emperor monsters, and the Numeron deck itself, which I'm still working on remaking, which that is one deck I plan on, re on doing again. But I think Galaxy Eyes has always been one of my favorite monsters since Galaxy Eyes Pokemon Dragon was first played in Zexal. And also the fact that it's the deck that was, a, it was essentially the Kaiba deck of Zexal. Anyway, starting with the monsters, I play three copies of Photon Jumper. Jumper is essentially a battle fader that you can summon when an attack is declared, when an opponent's monster declares an attack by skipping your own battle phase. Or by skipping your next battle phase, and then the main thing with this deck is if it's sent to the graveyard, you add a galaxy spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Or you add a galaxy or photon spell or trap from deck to hand. Then I play three copies of Photon Orbital. That's let during your main phase you can target you can use that as an equip spell targeting a photon or galaxy monster you control. It gains 500 attack and can't be destroyed in battle. And then once per turn you can have send orbital to the graveyard to then be able to search for any photon or galaxy monster from your deck. Then I play two copies of Galaxy Summoner and one copy of Thrasher. Thrasher has the effect if you control no monsters, you can special summon it from your hand, and if it, it can't attack if you control other monsters. And then Summoner has the effect if it's normal or special summon, you can target a photon or galaxy in your graveyard, except for another summoner, special summon defense. Then you can target one other light monster you control. Its level becomes 4 until the end of the turn. You can only use each effect of Summoner per turn. So one thing I like about this is that if I have this with a Galaxy Soldier and I don't really have anything I can do with the Soldier, I can use the Summoner to turn the Soldier into level 4 and then use it for a rank 4 monster. Then I play 3 copies of Photon Vanisher. Vanisher cannot be normal Summoner set. It has to be special summoned by controlling a Photon or a Galaxy monster. It cannot attack the turn it's summoned, as well as when it is special summoned, you add a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon from your deck to your hand. And Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon is the heart and soul of this deck. And then I play three copies of Galaxy Soldier. Galaxy Soldier is a free summon just by discarding a light monster. And then when it's special summoned, you can add a Galaxy or... You can add a Galaxy monster from your deck to your hand. But you can, so you, what you can do is you can discard a light, summon this, add another soldier, discard another light, summon a second one. And then from there you can then be able to summon something like Cyber Dragon, Nova, and then Infinity on top of that. This is probably the only deck that plays Galaxy Soldier that does not use Soldier, just summon Infinity. Then I play two copies of Photon Emperor. Photon Emperor has the effect of, if it is sent to the graveyard, while you control a galaxy or photon monster, you can special summon it back to the field. And I believe it gives, also gives you additional normal summon. Yeah, after it is summoned, you can then normal summon a light monster in addition to your normal summoner set this turn. But you only gain that effect once. Then I also play two copies of Galaxy Knight. Galaxy Knight has the effect of you can normal summon it without attributing if you control a Galaxy or Photon monster. And then when it is summoned, you can target Galaxy Eyes in your graveyard, special summon it. And if I remember correctly, somewhere... Yeah, and then when you normal summon it, through, it, it will lose a thousand attack even if you don't have a Galaxy Eyes in your graveyard. And then, because it is the heart of the deck, I do play three copies of Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, you only need it for name. It is extremely rare that you will actually use its effect in battle, which is when it battles the monster, you can activate its effect at the start of the damage step to banish both monsters. And at the end of the battle phase, both monsters are turned to the field, and then Galaxy Eyes will gain 500 attack for each material that Banish Monster had, if it had any. Then I also play two copies of Galaxy Eyes Afterglow Dragon. Afterglow Dragon is a free summon if you control a Galaxy Eyes monster. And then if you act activate an Xyz monster's effect by detaching this card during the battle phase, you can activate its effect to then take a Galaxy Eyes as in your 
I believe, hand or deck. Yeah, and then you either summon it to your field or attach it to a monster NXE monster you control's material. And the, and if you do, all number of monsters you control have their attack points doubled. Or it's either that or if you activate the effect in the battle phase, it doubles the all numbers. The point is, you use it for OTKs in this deck. You can only use each effect of Galaxy Ice after Glow Dragon once per turn. And that is it for the monsters. For the spells, I play three copies of trade in. Just discard level 8, draw 2. Then I play one copy of Galaxy Trance and two copies of Saga of the Dragon Emperor. Galaxy Trance has the effect that you can pay 2,000 life points, target a photon in your graveyard, and then special summon it and a Galaxy from your deck that have the same level. And then. <laughs> Let's see. Their, if you do, their attack points become 2,000, their effects are negated, but you can only activate one trance per turn, and when you, the, during the turn you activate trance, you are only allowed to summon galaxy or photon monsters. So if you summon Nova Infinity before you activate this card, you cannot activate it, because you summoned a non-photon or galaxy that turn. And then Saga the Dragon Emperor says the effect if you can target a dragon you control, its attack becomes doubled until the end of the damage step, then if your opponent currently controls a dragon monster, the activation of the targeted monster's effects cannot be negated for the rest of the turn. And then during the main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one of your dragon Xyz monsters that has banished or in your graveyard in defense position. You only use each effect as Saga of the Dragon Emperor once per turn. This card's only in here for further OTK potentials. As if you're able, if you, this is a substitute for Afterglow. If you don't have Afterglow, but if you do have Afterglow and this, you can just Attack for even more damage. Like, I think with this card on Prime Photon Dragon by itself and the Afterglow, the attack points they would have is. Let's see. I do the fact. Game. If you have someone Prime Photon and have attack by itself with Afterglow's attack boost and the Saga of the Dragon Emperors, it'll have 22,400 attack points. Then for the other new card I play is two copies of Numbers Last Hope. Numbers Last Hope is always treated as a galaxy card, which that's the only downside of Saga of the, the Dragon Emperor, is that it's not a galaxy card, so you can't really start to worry. But Numbers Last Hope has the effect that you pay after your life points, target two monsters in your graveyard, Special summon both, but their effects are negated, and then immediately after the, the effect resolves, XZ summon a number XZ's monster using just those two monsters. And then you're not you can allowed a special summon from the extract for us turn except one more number monster, I believe. Okay, no, I read that wrong. After it's, this effect is resolved, you are locked from the extra deck after one. Er, I cannot word this right. You activate it, once it's resolved, you can only spawn from the extra deck one more time. Then I also play two copies of Galaxy Expedition. If you control level 5 or higher Galaxy, this card lets you special on level 5 or higher Galaxy or Photon from your deck. And you can only be activated if you control level 5 or higher Galaxy or Photon. As well as you can only activate one Expedition per turn. Then I play three copies of Galaxy 100. Galaxy 100 is a foolish burial when it's activated. That lets you send a photon or a galaxy monster card from your deck to the graveyard. You know, galaxy Ice photon dragon is special summon to your field, except during the damage step. Then you can look at your opponent's extra deck and then do one or two things, where you can banish a monster from it or special summon a number monster from their extra deck to your field. And you can only activate one galaxy 100 per turn. Then, to finish off the spells, I play three copies of Photon Sanctuary. This just gives you two Photon Tokens that are level 4 light thunder monsters with 2,000 attack and zero defense. Which, they're, essentially, it's just in here in case you need a Photon or Galaxy in play but don't have one. Or just need a quick way to get to Galaxy Eye's Soul Flare Dragon. Then, to finish off the deck, I play three copies of Tachyon Transmigration. I still think Transmigration is the best counter trap in the game, as 
You can, in order to activate, you have to control a Galaxy Eyes monster. You can activate from your hand if you control a Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon. But it all has the effect of, if your opponent activates a card or effect, you can activate this card in response to negate every card in the chain your opponent had in the chain before it, and then shuffle those cards back into the deck. Like, this was the only time I ever won a tournament at a game at a regional at table one, because it was used against print kids. They were like chain five or six, and I go chain seven this, and it's completely ruined their day. But that is it for the main deck. The main deck, I believe, is 42 cards. So if you want to make it 40, then you can t just take out the Saga of the Dragon Emperors. I'm just playing it because I thought it would be a cute card to play. Then moving on to the extra deck, I play one copy of Galaxy Eyes Afterglow Dragon. Or Afterglow. Galaxy Eyes Soul Flare Dragon. This card has the effect of when it's summoned, you can target a Galaxy or Photon in your grave, return it to your hand. And then. Once per turn, you can send a Galaxy and a Photon monster from your hand to the graveyard. Or a one Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Target one special summon monster your opponent controls. Destroy it. And you can only use each effect of Galaxy Eyes Soul Flare Dragon per once per turn. Then, I play one copy of Starleash Photon Blast Dragon. And one copy of Galaxy Photon Dragon. Starleash Photon Blast Dragon has the effect of if it's XZ summoned, you can special summon a Photon Monster from your hand, and then while the XZ monster is on the field, your opponent cannot target monsters you control that have 2,000, or they cannot target or destroy mo light monsters on your field that have 2,000 or more attack with card effects. And what's this other effect? And then once per your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can detach material from this card and target one of your Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragons that's banished or your graveyard and special summon it. And then a Galaxy Photon Dragon has the effect of other light monsters you control gain 500 attack. You can only use each of the following effects of Galaxy Photon Dragon once per turn where you can detach material from it. Either add a Photon or Galaxy card from your deck to your hand or you can send a card to the grid. And then if a light monster is special summoned to your field, Except during the damage step, you can target one of those monsters that level becomes 4 or 8 until the end of the turn. So again, you can use this to turn a Galaxy Soldier to a level 4 or 8. Then I play one copy of number 90, Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. Photon Lord has the effect of... As, if it has a Photon card's material, it can't be... What is it? Destroyed by... Yeah, it can't be destroyed by card effects. And then if your opponent... Or during your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can activate its effect so that you can take a Galaxy or Photon card from your deck, either add it to your hand or attach it to his material. If your opponent activates a monster effect, you can detach the material and negate the effect, and then if the detached card was a Galaxy card, you can then destroy that monster. Which, fun fact you can do, fun thing you can do with this card, is you can actually add Galaxy Cyclone from, you can either add it to your deck to your hand or attach it, detach it to negate and destroy, and then you have a the Grave Effect of Cyclone, where your opponent has a Grave Effect, or a face-up spell or trap you want to destroy. Such as Summon Limit, or There Can Be Only One, or the uh, Rivalry of the Warlords. Any one of those kind of hurt you really badly. Then I also play one copy of Draglubian, and one copy of Number One Dread Numeron Dragon. Draglubian has the effect of your opponent cannot target it with card effects. You can detach a material, target two numbered dragons in your extra deck and or graveyard. You summon one of them and attach the other two as material. However, you're not allowed to attack with monsters for that turn except for the summoned monster. Which normally will be Numeron Dragon for OTKs. As Numeron Dragon has the effect of once per turn, you detach an interior from it, it gains a thousand attack for the combined ranks of all these monsters in play. Which, if it's just Draglubian and Numeron Dragon, then that's 9,000. Saga of the Dragon Emperors would end up making that 18,000. And then it also has the effect of when this card is destroyed by card effect, you can destroy as many monsters on the field as possible, minimum one. And each player sets a spell trap from their graveyard to their field. When a monster requires an attack, while this card's in your graveyard and you have no cards in your hand or field, you can special on this card. Which norm will not happen at all because it was normally summoned off of Dragalubian. 
And the summoning requirement is two monsters, or two number Xyz monsters with the same name and, yeah, the same name and rank. Which, you will never be summoning Numeron Dragon the correct way. Then I play one copy of number 107, Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon. This is mainly in here just so you can activate Transmigration from your hand. But also the fact that you can activate its effect at the start of the battle phase, negate the effects of every other monster in play, and then return their attack points to their original amount. And then if your opponent activates a card or effect during the battle phase, Tachyon Dragon gains a thousand attack points for each card they activate and a second attack. So keep that in mind because if your opponent activates more than one effect, it'll gain a thousand attack per effect, but it still only gets a second attack. Then I play one copy of Hope Harbinger Dragon. This is just a card that if your opponent activates, activates a spell card or the effect of a spell, you can negate that effect and attach that spell to Har Hope Harbinger. If your opponent would declare an attack, you can detach material from Hope Harbinger to redeclare the attack to, to the Harbinger. And then its other effect is hardly ever used, but it has the effect that if a face up XZ monster you control is destroyed by battle of card effect, other than this card, you can target one face up XZ monster you control, it gains attack equals, equal to one of those destroyed monsters' original attack. Which that effect, again, hardly ever comes up. I just figured I'd mention it because sometimes it does, and when it does, you have game. Ironically, I think Raid Raptor is a deck that was able to abuse that. Let's get a monster to have really high attack points. Then I also play one copy of number 62, Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon. This card has the effect of once per battle. You, er, blah, 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 start. This card battles during the damage calculation when you quick effect, you can detach material from this card so that once per battle, it gains 200 attack for the combined ranks of all these monsters on the field times 200. So you have this and two other level 8s, it'll gain 4,800 attack points. However, it'll only deal... If it does not have Galaxy Eyes Prime... Or I cannot talk for some reason. If Prime Photon Dragon does not have Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon's material, then the damage it inflicts is halved. And then during your second standby phase, as this card was destroyed by card effect, you summon it back to your field. Then I play one copy of Galaxy... Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon, one Cypher Blade Dragon, and one Galaxy Eyes Cypher X Dragon. Cypher Dragon lets you target one monster your opponent controls, take control of it, and negate its effects if it has any. Its name becomes Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon, and its attack and defense become 30, or 3,000 and 2,500. And then, if you use this effect, you aren't allowed to attack directly with any monsters that turn except the original Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon. Cypher Blade has the effect of you can exceed summon it by using a Galaxy Eyes Xyz monster you control as material. And then you can detach one material, target one. You target one card in the field, destroy it. I always have to read it because there's another card that does the same thing, so it's face up. And then Cypher Blade cannot be used as Xyz material. And then as Cypher Blade is destroyed, you can target a Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon in your grave and special summon it. And then Cypher X Dragon can be exceeded on by using a Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon you control's material. Which one thing I like dealing with it, this card is activate Cypher Dragon's effect, steal an opponent's monster, use it to immediately make a Cypher X Dragon. And then use the original Cypher Dragon to make a Cypher Blade. And then Cypher X Dragon has... I don't believe you ever use its other effect. Let's see. You can detach two materials from this card. Your opponent cannot target light monsters you control with card effects until the end of your opponent's next turn. Then once per turn, during your standby phase, you return one rank 9 or higher... or higher... Dragon Xyz monster from your graveyard to the extra deck. Then you can special summon that monster from the extra deck by using this card you control as material. Again, you'll never use that last effect. The most you'll do with this is... summon it. If you use it by using a stolen Xyz monster, then maybe you can... Make it so your opponent can't target. But again, it isn't here so you can steal an opponent's monster and have a free 4,000 attack dragon. Now I apply one copy of Full Armor Photon. This can be used by using a Galaxy XE's monster you can, or Galaxy Ice XE's. You can detach material, target one face up card in the field, destroy it. And 
unless you're playing against McConkel, you'll never use its other effects. Which is once per turn, you can target after two equipped cards, equipped to this card, attach them to this card's material, and then what? So I don't know why McConkel, of all things, will be equipping things to your monster. But if they ever do equip two things, you can just go, okay, these are materials now. I honestly don't know what McConkel do still because the only time I fought them was what like, Dinosaur and Lost World ruins them. Then I play one copy of Chaos Number 62, Neo Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon. Prime Photon Dragon has the effect you can exceed on it by using a Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon you control. Transfers materials to this, and then at the start of your battle phase, you can activate, or you can attach one material from this card to them, give it up to three attacks on monsters during the battle phase. And if it has Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon material, it gains the effects of it's unaffected by your opponent's monster effects. And gains attack equal to the levels and ranks of all monsters attached to it. So if you summon, summon it by using a newly summoned Prime Photon Dragon, then it'll be gaining 2400 attack points. But also being unaffected by opponent's monster effects. And being able to attack up to three monsters. And finally, I play one copy of Neo Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Just because I really think it's funny to use against Kashtira. Because if you summon. Summon it using a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon you control's material, it's, it just negates the effects of every other face-up card in the field. And then once per turn you can detach one material from this card to then detach all Xyz materials from monst Xyz monsters your opponent controls. And it gains 500 attack points for each material loss, and then it can make one attack for each material that- or for every 500 it gained. So if you detach 5 materials from monsters your opponent controls, Fo or Photon Dragon gains five hundred or gains twenty five hundred attack and the ability to attack five times. And that is it for my Galaxy Ice deck profile. If you have any ideas what I can do to improve the deck, any idea of decks you like to see made in the future, or decks like to see face each other. I am still working on one comment I got, which was Red Dragon Retreat versus Starless Dragon. I just need to either get all those cards for the build of Starless deck or find someone who has one that is willing to let me record a, a match with them. But that is everything for the video so if you have any comments comment down below thanks for watching